Heavenly Father, we thank you. We ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us this morning, Lord. Speak to us. Open our eyes, Lord. Touch our hearts, our soul, our spirit, and prepare us for what you have for us this morning. We ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So my topic this morning is choices. We all have choices. Choices is the ability to make a decision between different options. You know, you have a choice to what to wear to choice to church, what not to wear, what to eat for breakfast, what not to eat for breakfast. You know, um, when you go to um, a restaurant and you have the menu, and there are more than three items of the menu, you have a choice. So, but with choices, before you can make a choice, there has to be a challenge. So, there are three things, three C's. Challenges, choices, and consequences. And every day we are faced with these three things. We may not be able to pick our challenges, but each one of us will have to make a decision that may have a positive or negative impact on our lives, family members, nation, and even generations yet unborn. God has given us that free will to make a choice whether to follow him or not to follow him. So also we talk about what I call the three D's. Devotion, deliverance, and death. Devotion, deliverance, and death. Challenges, choices, and consequences. Devotion, deliverance, and death. So now we can all go home. Yeah. That's the shortest sermon you've had. Devotion, deliverance, or death. You know, with the U.S. election rapidly approaching, this is not a political sermon. The impact of our votes and prayers stretches beyond U.S. borders and the halls of the White House and the Congress. We are not only voting for the president, we are also voting for political appointments, appointees, justices, civil services, as well as the security of our nation. Everything the president touches, we are going to vote for. He says, we are the light of the world. Light is not passive, but active. It illuminates, transforms, and eliminates darkness. Light illuminates, transforms, and eliminates darkness. We have been called to transform, illuminate, and transform everything we come into contact, including the political realm. We are not independent of our surrounding events. Hear somebody say, people are flawed, candidates are flawed, but our God is perfect. The platform of the two parties are diametrically opposed with regards to life, mutilation of children, marriage, and religious freedom, and even the support for Israel. Let's look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. I just want to point something out there that I just realized. You know, it talks about the dragon. And he said the dragon was enraged with the woman. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. So the woman represents Israel. So the dragon went to make war with Israel. Um, tried to get Israel, but couldn't. Then he says, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. You better pay attention here. Who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That is the body of Christ. The dragon is actually after you. Not only Israel. So what is happening in Israel is just a tip of the iceberg. He is actually after you and me. Because we keep the testimony of Jesus Christ. 
the Israelites are not keeping as of today, keeping the testimony of Jesus Christ. Very few of them are Messiah Jews. Very few. So the majority of them are not keeping the testimony of Jesus Christ. It is the body of Christ. So the dragon is actually after you and me. So you have to understand what is happening. How do we vote? Some people have estimated that about 40 million of Christians will not vote because they are dissatisfied with the candidates for one reason or the other. 40 million. That is more than the number who voted almost in 2020. So you can imagine the impact we Christians can make in the trajectory of the history of this country if we can come out and vote. I'm not telling you who to vote, but you have to vote Bible. Not voting is making a choice to vote for evil. So you cannot say you are not voting. Anybody who says he's not voting, it's like say you know the truth, you're not telling the truth, you are lying. If you are not voting, you are voting for the alternative. God, through Jeremiah, asked a serious question which is applicable to us today. In Jeremiah 7, 8 to 10. Behold, you trust in deceptive words to no avail. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, make offerings to Baal, and go after other gods that you have not known? And then come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered, only to go on doing all these abominations. That is what is happening in the churches every Sunday. We continue Monday through Saturday with everything we are doing. And then on Sunday, we come into the body of Christ and say to the church, and we say, We are delivered. We are Christians. Your Christianity is not only when you come to church, but what you do with your life. Like we said to the, to the men yesterday, you know, at times we say we are preaching the word. What do you mean that you are preaching the word? You, yourself, you are the message. Because Jesus Christ lives in you. And if Jesus Christ lives in you, what is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is the word. So it's not what you say. And I'll tell you a story when I get to that point. But we have decided to live a very double life. Monday through Saturday, we'll do whatever we want to do. On Sunday, we come to church and we say, Praise ye, O Lord. God cannot be mocked. Our elected leaders affect the spiritual direction of any nation. The scriptures remind us of the consequences. We have a choice on who to worship. Who are you devoted to? Yourself or to God Almighty? Is there a cost, commitment, discipleship, uncertainties, persecution for your choice or your decision? Or is it by and by? So let's look at Luke chapter 9, 57 to 61. Because we think that being a Christian and walking with Christ, especially in this country, is cost free. If your Christianity does not cost you something, you are missing something. If your Christianity does not cost you something, you are missing something. Now it happened, verse 57, as they journeyed on the road, that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and bears of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So if we are following Christ and we are certain where he is leading us, then it's not Christ who is leading us. Can I say that again? If we are certain when we are following Christ 
that we know where we are going, then it's not Christ who is leading us. That's what he said. Foxes have holes, but the Son of Man does not know, does not have where to lay his head. So our journey with Christ is going to be filled with ups and downs. With mountains, with crooked, with potholes. Then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and preach the kingdom of God. There has to be total commitment when we say we are followers of Christ in everything we are doing. We cannot say that we are for Christ, then we say we allow certain levels of abortion. We can't say that we are for Christ, we say we allow mutilation of children. We can't say that we are for Christ, we allow people living together who are not married. We cannot say we are for Christ. We support the attack on religious freedom, which is coming in this country. If we don't know about it, just wait and it will soon happen if we don't change things in this country. So it's not that Christ wasn't sympathetic that somebody died. He was saying that if you actually want to follow me, you have to make a decision. You have to make a choice on who you are following. Another said on 61, another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who at my house. He just wanted to go back and have a party. You know, you cannot stride the two walls, which is what we are doing. If you remember what Jeremiah said, we are standing on two sides saying we will be part of the world and then we will be part of the church. Jesus is saying, if you want to be with me, you have to have total commitment. There's a cost to it. Matthew 16, 24 talks about taking up the cross and following Christ. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. It's important here, you know, people have a lot of interpretation about denying yourself or taking up the cross. But what he's saying here simply is that we have to make a decision. Are we on the throne or is Christ on the throne? If Christ is on the throne, then we have to deny ourselves what we want, our selfishness, and then walk with him. We have to acknowledge and accept our weakness. We have to deny our... You know, everybody has a will. Talking about... You know, everybody here believes, Right? But not everybody has faith. <laughs> okay, let me tell you a story. I heard this story. So there was this guy who was walking the tightrope in uh, Niagara Falls. So he carried 200 pounds of um, sand on the tightrope across the Niagara Falls. Back and front. Back and back and back. Front and back. Front and back. And then he says, you know, I can take somebody on this wheelbarrow across and bring the person back. So one man says, I believe. It's because he says, do you believe? He says, I believe. Then he says, if you believe, come. Let me take you across. The guy said, no, 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 I'm not. He believed, but he did not have faith. We believe, but do we have faith? If we have faith, then our votes should count to show that we have faith. You know, he said, somebody wrote something, he says, cowardice asks, is it safe? Expediency asks, is it politic? Vanity asks, is this popular? Conscience says, is it right? Are we ready to do the right thing? Because the most important thing it's not when you, what you do when it's convenient. But when it's inconvenient for you, that is when it matters. Are we ready to vote the right way according to what our Lord Jesus Christ is saying to us? He's not saying vote for Trump or vote for Kamala. But he's saying 
Look at my words. Both Bible. I abhor the shedding of innocent blood. I deplore the mutilation of children. That is a culture of death. I deplore that my people who are called by my name cannot even walk under the testimony of Christ. The second thing we talk about, we talk about devotion. This is about deliverance. In Matthew 11, 28, 30, he has delivered us. We still have a choice to say, are we accepting his deliverance he's given to us? He says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So he says, come to me. Because we take up burdens that does not consign us. You know, there are some places in the, in the scriptures where Paul, I think it's in uh, First Thessalonians, he told them to mind your own business. We, we don't mind our own business. Our business is only to follow Christ. And when we follow Christ, that will influence our community because we are the light and salt. But he says something. And we miss that. He says, take my yoke. But he didn't say, he just take my yoke. He said, learn from me. We don't learn from him. And something else he said, he said, when we learn from him, because of his gentleness and humility, we have to be humble. We have to be gentle. You see, he says he will give us rest for our soul. Because where the problem is, is in our soul. And at times we think the burden and the yoke is on our physical being. No, it's on our soul. Because that is where we have restlessness. Because we are taking on businesses that does not consign us. Our businesses is actually to learn from him. How do you learn from him? You go to the word of God and you accept what has been written there. In Colossians 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 12 to 14, he says, Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. You know, it's, 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 um, you know over here we enjoy light. Yes, power all the time. You come and switch on the light. Can you imagine? Somebody has paid your electric bill. And then you go into your house at night because you did not pay the bill yourself, then you refuse to switch on the light. And you decide to dwell in darkness. That is what we are doing as a body of Christ. We are deciding to dwell in darkness. Because if we are going to support anybody who says the shedding of innocent blood is okay, then we are dwelling in darkness. If we are going to say that we are going to support somebody who mutilates Children. And at times, you know, we look at the individual and say the two individuals are hopeless. But look at what the parties stand for. Move beyond Trump or Kamala and look at what does the party actually stand for. One stands for life. One stands for death at all times. One says, I'm going to mutilate your children without your consent. One says, no, 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 you can't do that with parental, without parental consent. One says, oh, you, now you cannot talk about Christianity in the public place. One says, you have the freedom. Which one will you vote for? It's, it's just simple. We have moved from the kingdom of darkness 
into the kingdom of light, yet we still want to be in the kingdom of darkness by making choices that will enslave us. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. The third one is choice of death. Do we want to live or do we want to die? In Deuteronomy 30, verse 15 to 20, it says, See, I have said before you today, life and good, death and evil, in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear, and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, which other gods are he talking about? The most important god he's talking about is our self, our will. How we have now choosing to replace the only true God with different gods in our lives. We make choices. On Sunday morning, the churches are empty. Raiders um, Stadium is full. With who? Those who say they are Christians. That is the day everybody wants to do something else. I am verse 18. I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go and possess. I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may live. It's important to understand that our descendants are very important. You remember, I think it's Hezekiah. Hezekiah was told that because he allowed some people to come and look at um, things in his um, secret place, that those people are going to take them away, but it will not be in his lifetime. If you're a caring parent or father, you will have said, what will I do to prevent this to happen during my children's time? You will have prayed. We are so comfortable where we are that we don't care about the next generation. Because we lack that empathy. We are allowing certain things to go on. It doesn't concern me. Probably you don't have young children. You say it doesn't concern me. But your children will have children by God's grace. And if, even if your children won't, you know somebody who will have children, grandchildren, children, next generation. And we say, well, it doesn't concern me. My child is not in, what do you call it? Is it elementary school? What's it called? What class, what's this uh, school, uh, Daniel? Is, what school is that? Great school. My child is not in high school, so it doesn't concern me. That is Christian irresponsibility. Well, going on, there's hope for God's people and our nation to return to God in repentance. Do we understand the times? Do we understand what is at stake? People are saying that this may be, you know, every, every election is the, is, the, is the one. But this one is actually the one. This is actually the one. Because we have a choice between life and death. In First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, it says from the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe within, with their relatives. All these men understood the signs of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. Do we actually, in the church, understand the times? 
If you don't understand the times, look at what is happening in Israel. Look at the time table of things happening. The return of the Israelites, the uh, 1967 war, the 1973 war, the uh, coming back into Jerusalem. Look at what is happening. Then go back to the scriptures and see how it's, going, how it's actually translating to the end of the end times. And then you will know that Israel is important because <laughs> Israel nation will never be destroyed. It will never be destroyed because God has made a promise and Jesus Christ will come in Jerusalem. That's where he's going to return. He's not going to return in Las Vegas. <laughs> you know, he's going to return in Jerusalem. And you know what? It is a battle between the enemy and the people of God. There is somebody, they call him the Archangel Michael on the side of Israel, fighting, if you don't know. Because there's no way you can explain how Israel was able to put down all those missiles from Iran. Those who have done the scientific said it wasn't possible. There is a God in heaven. What is our own role is to make sure that we have the right support. Because it says in the Bible, if you curse Israel, you will be cursed. Let me tell you something. It's not when you use a curse word. If you don't support Israel, you are cursing Israel. So it's very important. In Revelations 12, 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. We need to understand our position and role and return to the Lord who helped me. In Jeremiah, he says, if we don't understand what is happening, in Jeremiah, he says, call upon me and I'll show you great and hidden things. We need to call on God to open our eyes. You know, not, not everybody who has eyes sees. And, nobody, and not everybody who is looking is seeing. Has that happened to you? And somebody say, hey, are you there? Hello? But in Jeremiah, there was something Jeremiah asked. And that's where we need to pray for this nation. He's asked, is there anything too hard for God? With God, nothing is impossible. We can turn the trajectory of this nation back to where God will favor us. But it's left for us to seek God. And most importantly, if you have not registered, go and register and vote. Because not voting is voting for death and evil. Amen? So we need to do that.